We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in to one of ACC's messages. As you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're on social media, use the hashtag you belong at ACC if God taught you anything during this message. We want to get to know you. So check out our online community by watching our live service at arundelcc.org live. This is where you can interact with other viewers in the chat, fill out a prayer request, and follow along with message notes. And we believe that God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Good morning, church. We're doing things a little out of order today, and I forgot. So let's, uh, let's bring some house lights up a little bit. I want to see you all. And uh, this morning, like I said, we're going to move some things around because you are here for Vision Sunday which is something a little bit unique. It's a little something that we, we don't do all the time. It's something that we do one time per year where we get to express really the vision that God has put on the heart of this church. Uh, you get to hear what God's going to be doing for the next year and what God's going to be doing in the next three to five years. And I'm really excited about some of the things I get to show you today. Real quick, if you don't know how we come up with the vision for this church, I want to share that with you. Uh, we have a group of, of men at Arundel Christian Church we call our overseers, and our overseers on an annual basis, we take time to go on a retreat together every year, early fall. And during that retreat, before we even get there, we spend time in prayer together, we spend time in prayer separately, we spend time fasting, and then we gather together, before we gather, we, we, we individually put together what we feel the Holy Spirit has put on our hearts for the future of our church. And then we gather together on that retreat, and we compare notes and see all the ways that God has aligned us to where he wants to take the church. And one of my favorite things about that process is every year when we do it, it's amazing how aligned we are, how God has put the same thing on the hearts of each person. And so as we compare notes, we get to see that God is taking us someplace exciting, uh, and, and I want to share that with you. Now, here's why we do Vision Sunday, why we, we pause our series, why we don't do a normal uh, kind of preaching time today. It, it says in Habakkuk 2, verse 2, it says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that he uh, may run who reads it. And so really what we do is we, we take the vision that God has given to us, we put it really big on this tablet up on the screen, and then we let everybody see it. So as a church, we can get excited about what's going on, about what God's doing, and we can run with it together. Now, before we get into the vision part, and we're going to sing some more songs of worship together, but before we get into what God has planned for us in the future, I want to spend some time first looking at where we are right now. When you think about it from a perspective of a GPS, when you're trying to go somewhere and you put your GPS coordinates into your phone, right? Uh, what's a, a very important bit of information your GPS needs to know? Where you are right now, right? It, clearly, it needs to know where you're going, but we as a church, we first need to recognize where we are right at this moment. And, and to be honest, I want to share some, some figures with you, share some numbers with you, and a little element I call looking back in praise. God's hand of blessing has been on this church in a uh, kind of incredible, almost unbelievable sort of way. And I want to share that with you so you know that before we, we sing our next two songs, where we're going to be able to praise God together, uh, that you see what kind of blessing he's been pouring out on this church. And so I wrote down a few different things. Uh, I have some pictures to show you. And uh, just to highlight, let me start with this, what, what I call our yearly growth. The growth rate of this church has been incredibly remarkable. Uh, I'll, I'll put this into context. 52% of all churches in America this year declined in size. There, there's another 14% of churches, and by the way, that's not a good thing, a church declining in size. That's not something we're celebrating. It's not something that, it's, it's just a, a fact of the matter. What's happening in churches in this country, 52% of them smaller. Now, 14% experience no growth, and 33% of the churches experience somewhere between uh, 1% and 5% growth this year. Arundel Christian Church, now running three years straight, our average growth rate has been 30% per year. Isn't that amazing? 
So we're experiencing growth that is not normal. It's not what's happening in most churches. There are certainly churches that are experiencing growth, and there are churches that are uh, probably even outpacing us, and that's an incredible thing. But my, my point is, is I want us to recognize that the growth we're experiencing, you can see a, a chart of that. I don't know if we can put that up on the screen. Our attendance growth rate, you can see that it's steadily moving up, and we have no reason to think that this is going to change. And so as a church, we're doing everything we can to prepare with open hands for the continued blessing of growth that God wants us to bring. Now, we don't want to grow just to be a large church. We're not excited about just being a large church. We're excited about reaching those who are far from Jesus and bringing them into the family of faith. And so we want to continue to make room for those who, who, need, who need to meet Jesus. All right? Now, let me share a few other things about these numbers that I think are pretty interesting. Uh, most churches in, in polls this year uh, are at, uh, what's the, most churches are still at 85% of their attendance that they had before the pandemic. So right now, you look at church size and you ask how many people are going to your church, uh, most churches have 85, uh, are at 85% of where they were before the pandemic. Arundel Christian Church, all right, compared to that statistic, we are at 51% more people than we had before the pandemic. And so it just kind of shows some, some incredible things. I also want to make a comment about that growth. One of my favorite things about it is the incredible beauty of the diversity that God has been bringing to this church. Uh, this is just a cross-section. When you look at the, <clears throat> the people of Glen Burnie and North Anne Arundel County, and you see how that's represented within the body of Christ here, it's just a beautiful uh, representation of that, and that's something I'm excited about. And it's why we're launching for the first time, in order to make room for the growth that you see, on, you saw on that chart, it's why we're, we're launching the fourth service this Wednesday night. All right? And so if you are uh, looking for an experience in the evening and you want to free up some space on Sunday morning so that there's room for others as we get into the fall, uh, late October and early November are the largest attendance our church ever has is in that season. So as we start to get more and more cramped, if you're shifting over to that Wednesday night, you'll make room for other people. Or you can stay put and invite other people into that Wednesday night. Either way, we want to make room for more people in our community to worship with us. Let me tell you about uh, another thing we did this year that I'm super excited about. It's my, probably my, uh, one of the, the bits of work that I'm most excited to see the fruits of is our new discipleship program. Now, we've had a discipleship program in kind of a, an alpha and beta stage in the last couple years, but we've now developed our discipleship program to such a place that if someone were to claim, hey, that church is really good at making uh, baptized converts, but they're not really good at turning them into fully uh, devoted disciples of Jesus, I would challenge them on that because we have an incredible opportunity for discipleship for anybody who wants it. Our discipleship program is four parts. You can kind of see that on the screen. Let me show them to you. You have our growth courses, which you're all familiar with. A growth course is a course that you can take. Some of them are one week long. Some of them are four weeks long. Some of them are longer. And these growth courses cover ranges of topics anywhere from, hey, let's go through the book of Genesis together, all the way through, let's learn about how to manage our finances in a godly way. And so you can take those growth courses whenever you need them. Uh, we also have Discipleship 101. Here's what Discipleship 101 is. If you're a brand new believer, you just recently gave your life to Jesus, you recently got baptized, and you're like, okay, I know that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I know that Jesus died on the cross for me, but I don't really know much beyond that. I know this book has a lot of other things in it. Discipleship 101 is that opportunity that you have to learn some of those basic doctrines of, of the faith, to learn some of the basic things about what it is that it means to be a Christian and a follower of Christ. And even some basic like habits, like how to read the Bible, how do I pray, how do I do some of those basic things. We cover all that in Discipleship 101. And so I would encourage you, if you're brand new to faith or you still don't really quite understand what it is, maybe you're not even a Christian yet and you really want to get a better understanding of what it is you might be following if you decide to commit to following Jesus. Discipleship 101 is a great course for you. And then we also have these Go Deeper Weekends. These Go Deeper Weekends, it's like a weekend retreat 
but you don't go anywhere. You, you come here, you sleep in your own house, but you're going to come on a Friday night and then go sleep in your house, and you're going to come on Saturday and then go sleep in your house and come back and worship on Sunday. And so it's a retreat that you, you do while you're still sleeping in your own home. But we're going to do two of them per year, and the retreats are all built around teaching you different methods of studying the Bible for yourself. So you're going to learn how to study God's Word, how to do some word studies, and how to use uh, different, you know, uh, tools that are at your disposal to really understand what is God's Word actually saying here. And then you get to pick your favorite method, and you get to apply that for the rest of the time that you study God's Word. We want to teach you how to feed yourselves in those Go Deeper weekends. And then the last one I'm probably most excited about is our evangelism certificate program. This is for those of you who are maybe a little further along in your faith. You've been a follower of Jesus for a while, but you want to take that next level of learning how to defend your faith and how to articulate what it is that you believe for other people who are asking you. This is a, a, a three different sessions. They can be taken in any order. So you can take session three before you take session one. You can take them in any order. And they, we're offering all three every year but you don't have to do them all in a year. You can do one one year and another one a different year. You could take three years, four years to do it. But when you're all done with all the sessions, you graduate out of this program with an evangelism uh, certificate. And you're able to ultimately know that I, I'm now equipped to defend my faith, to express verbally what I believe. And uh, that's an incredible thing. So whether you are a brand new believer, you're even before, right pre-faith, you're still exploring Jesus, or even a follower of Christ for 40 years, we have something for you to help you become more and more like Jesus. That's our discipleship program. We also launched another ministry this year called our Stephen Ministries. Our, our Stephen Ministers, if you've heard this before, you probably saw some people on stage, you've heard us use this phrase, you're like, I don't really quite understand what this Stephen Ministries thing is. Well, let me explain it, because there's some of you in here that need to be a Stephen Minister, and there's some of you in here who need a Stephen Minister, and you don't even know it yet. And so what this is, is it's a one-on-one -on -one program where if you are stuck for some reason, you're stuck in grief because you lost someone or something you love, you lost your job, you, uh, maybe you lost a marriage, you're going through a divorce, you have been divorced, or maybe you're just stuck in your career, you don't really know what's next, and you're, you're, you're frustrated and depressed about it, and you're just in a, in a season of life where you need someone to help walk you into a place of health. What we do is we pair you with a Stephen minister, and that Stephen minister, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So if you have a Stephen minister, that Stephen minister isn't working with anyone else but you for the entire time you're working together. You meet together on a weekly basis, and they help you get unstuck using principles that we find in Scripture. They counsel you and guide you into a place of health. Guys with guys and girls with girls. And so maybe you're in this room and you're in a place, you're like, I'm stuck. I've been grieving this thing. I can't get out of it. I'm lost and I need some help. We can find you a Stephen minister to walk alongside you for as long as you need. And maybe you're in this room and you're like, I should be a Stephen minister. We'll help get you plugged into that and, and train you up. And, and so that's something we've trained up Stephen ministers this year. They're out already doing the work of Stephen ministry. And we want to celebrate that. Uh, some of the work that God's done through us this year. Here's another thing. You know, I, I, I'm kind of going fast. Are you excited about the three things I've already covered? Are you excited about this? <laughs> another thing we ought to celebrate as we look back and praise is the, the number of Go Adventures we've sent out this year, the number of people. We had a goal at the beginning of the year to send 100 people on Go Adventures. And right now, out on the field, I think we have our 95th uh, missionary who's out on the field right now. We send out teams this past week to Kenya and another team out to Thailand. And we're, we're going to send, before the end of the year, we're going to accomplish this goal. We will have our 100th missionary out in our country and out throughout our world being the hands and feet of Jesus. That's pretty exciting. That was a huge goal. And you all helped us get there. Some of you have gone physically. Some of you have gone financially. All of us have gone prayerfully. And so we thank you for helping our church accomplish that. Another thing that I want to celebrate with you is the missional generosity of this church. 
Whenever you give to ACC, we're intentional about making sure that a portion of those funds go right back to loving our community and loving our world. And so we, we tallied up the amount of money that we have, checks we've written and, and people that we've blessed and things that we've done through your generosity. And in, in this year, uh, we have given $174,000 away to our community. Another, another thing I want to celebrate you with you is we had a goal of creating a development plan for how we could continue to be a growing church. What does it look like? Do we just keep adding services or do we move to a new location? Do we build something new? Well, we have that development plan, the early stages of it, ready to present to you today. I'm not going to get there yet, but you're going to see that. We can celebrate, though, that God has given us a direction in that, and you'll get to see what that looks like shortly. Another thing, have you guys enjoyed our sermon series that we've had this year, the different opportunities? Yeah. I would say that as a church, we've been intentional about being bold, saying the hard thing, and making sure that we're grounded in truth, making sure that our width strategy isn't to water down the gospel, but to preach deep sermons, hard-hitting sermons, and, and watching as people long for that kind of depth in their life. We want to teach the truth, and we don't want to shy away from hard topics. And this year, um, if you go back 365 days, we did a series called Origins, where we talked about the beginning of all things. We walked through the book of James together. Uh, we walked through the book of Job together. Uh, we did that series called Family Matters, learning how we can be strong families that do things God's way. We also did a series called This Means War. We looked at the ways that our culture is declaring war against the principles and morality we find in Scripture and how we ought to stand up against that. We did a series this summer called Unshakables. We walked through the different core doctrine, our essentials of faith, and what it is that we believe and why we believe it. We walked through those one week at a time. And right now we're in a series called Colossians. I'm really enjoying our Colossians series. We got two weeks left, so next week we're going to, uh, got one more, and then the week after that. So we're going to wrap up Colossians. And then you want to hear what's next? Yeah, we have two more series that we're going to do this year together. But before we get to those, I'm going to pause uh, the, the Sunday before Election Tuesday. I'm going to do a one-off series called How to Punch Your Ballot Without Punching Your Neighbor. And so we're going to do that. <laughs> right, that's just a one week. And then after that, we're going to do a series called Angels and Demons. We're going to talk about the supernatural forces that are uh, present all over this world that we can't see with our eyes and talk about angels and demons together. And then we're also then going to wrap up the year going through a series through the book of Ruth. And one of my favorite things about the way we choose to preach sermons in this church is we want to be really well balanced. We want to make sure everyone has a, a healthy diet. And so that we're, we're walking through books of the Old Testament together. We're walking through books of the New Testament together, sprinkled in with some topical things that are really uh, poignant to where we are right now in our culture and making sure that we all walk away without just being a fluffy church that just talks about all the fun stuff. All right? And so our bold teaching would be something that, that we've seen this year and the, the last thing, and I, I think there's a lot of room for celebration here, is we've basically broken every record this church has ever had this past year. Let me share some of those with you. Some of them you already know about. Uh, last week, we, we broke a record. Last, last year, we baptized 107 people. Uh, this year, we've already baptized 110, so we've already broken that record. We've still got months ahead of us. If you look at... If you look at... Uh, the last part of last year, just going back 365 days, we baptized 135 people in the past year. Our Rundle Christian uh, Church Kids Program, ACC Kids, record-setting year. We have 240 kids is our new record for how many kids we've had on a single Sunday. 240 of your kids. If you look at uh, perspective of generosity, uh, right now, our weekly giving average is up by $2,500 per week, um, and that's just because you guys are being faithful and being generous. Yeah, thank you for that. Now, listen, I could go on and on about all the records, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, Arundel Christian Church isn't a, a record-breaking church. 
we just happen to serve a record-breaking God, right? And God is certainly the one who gets all the credit. He's the one who's doing all the work. He's the one that we ought to show uh, thankfulness to. He's the one that as we go into the next year, we want to have our hands open saying, God, we're ready for more of whatever you want to do. We're ready for more. And before we do that, though, I think it's important for us to stand right where we are and to offer up some songs of praise and gratitude for all that God has done before we talk about what's coming in the future. So would you stand with me? We're going to sing these songs together. Father God, we thank you so much for your goodness to this church. As we move on now into sharing the vision that you've given the leaders of this church, before we do, we want to to recognize the truth that you are the one that's worthy of all the praise. You are the one who gets all the glory. And we are so thankful for the blessing you've poured out on this church. Father, would you continue to prepare our hearts and our hands and our minds and our bodies to receive uh, whatever it is that you have for us in the future. And as I lay out that vision for us today, would you speak through me? Would you help me to clearly articulate the vision you've put on our hearts? And then would you help us be a church that can see it clearly written so we can run after it together? We thank you for your goodness, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, you go ahead and have a seat. I want to share with you uh, a verse. If you grab your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 43, before, before we put that up on the screen, I want to give you an idea about what you're about to see. So in Isaiah 43, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he's, he's, he's speaking on behalf of, and he's, he's prophesying on the words of God, and God is ultimately reminding his people how good he is. He's reminding them about how he held back the waters and he destroyed the enemies and he did this and he saved his people and, and he lists this whole like resume of his goodness. He lists it line by line and says, you're God, I'm, I'm a good God. And then we get to verse, uh, verse 18. And here's what he says. He says, but what? Forget all that. He says, but forget all that. Do you guys say those words with me? Forget all that. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I want to pause for a minute and be like, wait, what do you mean forget all that? Like God's good. He's done incredible things. God is, is an awesome God. And so after listing all these things that he's done for the, his people, and then as Isaiah is saying, listen, but remember all the good things, but for, forget all that. It, he says, it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Now listen, this, this passage of Scripture wasn't written as a prophecy over a run Christian church in 2024. I get it. But the truth is that God is the same God he's always been. And if God can be a God who's poured out blessing after blessing after blessing on a people, and then to come back and say, hey, I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that that's the rate at which I bless people, and that this is exactly what I'm going to do for you the next year, and that all the things you've been experienced, that I'm limited to just that. Because if you look back at promises I've made to people I love in the past, I ask them to forget all that because I'm about to do something even better. And that's the God that we're asking in this new year, in the next three to five years, we're saying simply, God, we're so thankful for all that you've done, but we recognize that you can do even more abundantly than that. We recognize that in the community that we're in, there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who don't know you. We recognize that if there was a revival in every single church, there wouldn't be enough room for all the people coming to know Jesus, and we want to be a part of some movement like that in our community. And so we're simply recognizing if we can have open hands to say, listen, God is good. He's been faithful. When I said, by the way, 30% growth, that's, a, that's not over the last three years. That's per year for the last three years. When I say 110 baptisms so far, uh, we have more baptisms scheduled for today. Like, God's continuing to do more. He's continuing to add to these numbers. And my point is, we get to just say, God, we're asking to not get caught in this rut of just expecting the normal blessing. We want to see you do even more through us. Our hands are open to the blessing that you have for this church. And so with that in mind, I want to share with you two different versions of our vision. The first vision I want to share with you is what we call our long-term vision. We're going to call it uh, looking ahead in faith. 
These are the places that our overseers, our executive team, the pastors of this church, we're in alignment that God wants to take this church over the next three to five years. These things are further out. They're going to take some work. And then you'll understand a little bit more about why we have some of the goals for this year that I'll wrap up with today. All right, so looking ahead in faith, three to five years out. I got some things I want to show you. Uh, my favorite ones are towards the end of the list. I don't know if you can see the list on the screen. Uh, let's start with this first one, uh, partner engagement. Essentially, we have a goal that three to five years from now, 70% of those who are partners at Arundel Christian Church would be f engaged in four out of our five catalysts. Now, if you're not quite sure what those catalysts are, uh, when you leave today, you can see them. They're all in posters on the other side of this wall. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you what they are right now. We want to see that those of you uh, who are partners, that you're engaging in four out of five of them. One of them is just worshiping regularly, that, that 70 percent of our partners know what it looks like that on a regular basis to show up here and worship together with the body of Christ. And that uh, one, another one is connect relationally, that 70% that of our partners are, are connected into a life group, that they're connecting on a regular basis with a smaller community of believers somewhere throughout the week in this community. That's a pretty big deal, especially as a church continues to grow in size, it's important that we grow smaller, that every single person is known and prayed for and loved on an individual basis. And that happens in our life group ministry. We also want to, another one of our catalysts is growing personally. Simply put, we want to teach you how to feed yourselves, not to just show up here and expect the pastoral team to feed you every week. We want to teach you how to feed yourselves. And that discipleship program, those growth courses, the Discipleship 101, the Go Deeper Weekends, that apologetic certificate, these are things that you can do to help you grow into Christ-likeness. These are catalysts that speed up your growth into becoming more and more like Christ. Another one is serving sacrificially. We want to see 70% of our partnership uh, move into a place where they're showing up here on a Sunday and, or on a Wednesday night, and they're serving our church in some regard. We have a lot of partners right now that, that listen, you, you, maybe you're, you're on pause for a good reason. Maybe you're in a, a season of Sabbath you just had a baby or something's going on and you're like, hey, I need to be, I'm resting right now. That's, that's cool. But if you don't have a good reason, we want to see that over these next three to five years that we're encouraging every partner to step up to a place where they're serving within this church. And the last one is giving generously. We want to encourage our church to be generous in their, their giving towards Arundel Christian Church. And so one of the things that even before someone becomes a partner, a lot of people in this church, you are attenders. Like you already have decided that Jesus is the Lord of your life. You've already been baptized. You've already proclaimed that to other people. You've already decided that Arundel Christian Church is a church that you want to you plug into. But for whatever reason, you're still stuck as an attender instead of a partner. If you're wondering, like, well, what's the difference? Why would I want to become a partner? What changes? Well, when you become a partner in a church, you're simply saying, I'm in, and I give the, the other partners around me permission to speak truth into my life, to disciple me and encourage me and spur me towards love and good, love and good works. When you're an attender and you don't do any of our catalysts, we're not going to bug you because you haven't given us permission to. But when you become a partner, what you're simply saying is, I want to be a part of this family. I want in. I want to be a part of the work that we're doing here. And so by joining us in partnership, you're simply saying to all the other partners, I'm with you. Let's do this together. Let's make Jesus famous. And so we want to encourage, uh, through our thriving partnership engagement, 70% of our partners to be engaged in four of our five catalysts. It's a lot of work to do. Another thing that we want to see happen in the next three to five years is have what we call our rapid response teams. We're going we're gonna to make some investments uh, to, to pull this off. Essentially, we want to be able to be a church that can go out on a rapid, uh, rapid pace to other places in our community, in Glen Burnie, and in other places throughout the country. And so we'll have to buy some 15 passenger vans. We'll have to buy some trailers. We'll have to load those trailers up with equipment like chainsaws and generators and things like that. And essentially, we want to be a church that's trained up a multiple people to be part of a rapid response team so that when there is an issue going on in our country, 
we can quickly say, all right, we need five people to load up and head out. And we'll get out there quick to be the hands and feet of Jesus wherever we're needed. And so that's an investment we're going to make and, and develop over the next three to five years. Another thing is this outreach culture shift. Now, let me tell you what I mean by this, this culture shift. We want to be a church that within a two-mile radius of 710 Aqua Heart Road, that we are known for our radical love for the community that God has put us in. We want people, when they think of Arundel Christian Church, they're like, that's the church that showed me a random act of kindness the other day at the grocery store. That's the church that took care of this for me. That's the church that came and mowed my lawn. That's the church that if they were to go away today, they would be drastically missed in this community because of how much they love us. And now we got to make a culture shift here. Here's what I mean by that. About four years ago, our church sent out one team on a short-term missions trip. We call them Go Adventures. We sent out one team on Go Adventures four years ago. Now, we were intentional about building up a culture of being a church that sends out people for short-term missions. And so this next year, we are sending out 12 teams, right? So you go from one to 12 in a four-year period, we've made a drastic culture shift where we're now sending 100 people out every year, 100 plus next year, to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. We've already made that culture shift for international missions, But when it comes to right here in our own backyard, right here in our parking lot and across the street and all over Glen Burnie and in North Anne Arundel County, we have some work to do. Whenever we have a go day, anyone who's been a part of the go day, they know how much fun it is. They, They come back to each one because of what a great experience that is. But when we tell the rest of the church about a go day, sometimes only 25 or 30 of of, of a church of 1,100 to 1,200 people show up. And why? It's because we need to make some intentional efforts in shifting our hearts and our culture towards loving our community practically. And so over these next three to five years, what our hope is, is three years from now, we can look like we do at uh, Go Adventures for International Missions and say, man, we are a church that every time we say, hey, we're going to serve our community together, hundreds show up to go love out on our community together. So we need to make a culture shift in the next three to five years. We're going to be working on that together. Okay? Now, let me tell you about the one I'm most excited about, is a new worship center. Now, over these last couple of years, we've told you about our goals of coming up with a plan, figuring out if we needed to move to a new location, if we needed to open up alternate campuses, if we needed to buy a property, or what that could look like. And we've done a lot of exploring. We've done a lot of seeking. And, and really, this year, as an overseer team, we found alignment around a single plan that God has opened up the door to. And it's, it's expanding uh, by building a new worship center right here on this property. This is three to five years from now, right? No shovels are going in the ground tomorrow. All right, we got some work to do before we can get to this place. But in conversations we've already had with our county and what it is that we're able to do to be able to make room for more people. And by the way, let me just pause. I know some of you are hearing more people and that, that frustrates you because you don't want to be a part of a big church. And let me just make a real quick statement. If you don't like being around a lot of Christians in worship, you're going to hate heaven. <laughs> let me just say that, okay? Now, now, to bring that back into fairness, I understand there is value. There is something beautiful and precious about being a smaller congregation too, something that gets lost sometimes as a church grows. And so we want to be intentional about protecting some of those great things through our life group ministry and and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we can't be a church that just keeps adding services. We can't be a go from four services to five services and five services to six services just because of limited space with our parking lot and our our auditorium and our, uh, you know, children's spaces and all that. And so what we've decided is right here on this property— uh, the, the county has said we can grow onto our parking space. And what that looks like uh, is it, obviously we're going to expand our ability to park across the street. And so there's some uh, negotiating that's happening there. Uh, but ultimately creating the opportunity for more people to gather at a single moment by building a new auditorium that seats somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 people. And the balcony, uh, the, the, the auditorium will have a balcony. It will have a, uh, a basement space underneath for classrooms, 
for offices and things like that, a bunch of useful space for, for in more discipleship and classes and all the things that happen. But I wanna, I wanna show you some pictures. Now, before I show you some pictures, I need to say that these are just concepts. Will you say that with me? Just concepts. All right, so if like three years from now, we start building something, you're like, that's not what it looked like in the picture I took on the screen that one day. I know, we're just, uh, we're, we're, we've got some concepts of what this could look like, so you have an idea of where we're talking about building. So this is what the building looks like right now. Uh, this is what you're familiar with. It's a, a beautiful space. We're really glad that God has blessed us here. And so the, where you see this parking lot, the few spots that are right in that front row there with all those little uh, stanchion things sticking up, we can grow from the building all the way out to there. And we have a watercolor uh, concept of what that could look like. And so we'll pop that up there. And so this is a new worship center, like I said, that seats somewhere between 1,000 people and 1,200 people. You'll notice that it moves the entrance of the building off to the side. We have a whole watercolor version of this that's really pretty too. There you go. And so that's a watercolor concept of, of what we hope to do. Now, let me show you this from a different angle, all right? So this is, again, our building. Uh, the entrance will have to move over to this side so that people, most of our parking will be across the street where we're, where if, if, you know, prospectively where I'm standing right now. Most people will be parking over here, walking across the street, and go ahead and let's show what that looks like into a new entrance, into a new kind of uh, lobby area, cafe space where it is now. Some things will have to be moved around, um, but we can make this happen um, together over the next three to five years. We also have some mock-ups of what it could look like inside, uh, kind of you see inside an auditorium with a balcony. Uh, again, this is just conceptual. Um, and then we also have kind of a, like a new lobby space walking in uh, with cafe seating and whatnot, bathrooms in the back and entrances on the other side. So most people will walk in from the Aqua Heart roadside. There will also be doors on the Range roadside. And so we'll be able to figure out some parking over there as well and bring people in from both sides. Are you guys excited about this? Um, if you're not excited about it, just pipe down, okay? <laughs> just joking. Come, come talk to me if you've got some questions about what that could look like and what that means. Uh, we're excited about uh, in these next phases of hiring engineers to, to get the official plans out to the county and, and look at, at the cost of everything, what that's going to look like. Uh, we have uh, initial uh, proposals and numbers and all that, but uh, we just wanted to share with you today what that could look like and what we're moving towards. So this auditorium, to put that in perspective, seats about 400. And so it's an auditorium that's a, a twice, a little bit more than twice the size of this, okay? Um, plus all the classroom and office space underneath it, and it'll be an incredible opportunity to have a greater impact. Now, in order to pull that off, let's go into the, the debt reduction. So this debt reduction thing here... Uh, we have an, an original mortgage. It's the only debt that we have as a church is on the mortgage payment we make on this building right here and some of the additions we made on it years ago. And we want to go ahead and be intentional about paying down that mortgage over the next three to five years. Our goal is that in three to five years, that, that original mortgage will be gone. It'll be done and completely paid off. And so we have a lot of work to do starting this year if we want to accomplish that. We want to reduce our debt and get to a place where our debt to equity ratio is in a great spot to be able to build for our future, okay? And so uh, that's some of what is in our three to five year. This is not exhaustive. There's a lot of other things in our three to five year that just don't make sense to, to try to cover all of it in this setting. And so if you would like a detailed plan, let me know and I'll get that to you. All right, let's, uh, let's look up in hope. So now that we know where we're going three to five years from now, the question is, what do we need to do this year? Right where we're at right now, uh, we've, we've seen all that God's done. At, we're seeing all that God has planned, the, the greater new things that he has planned. Uh, how are we going to measure some of these things and work at some of these things this year? And by this year, I mean like the end of this year and all of 2025. Can you believe it? We're already there. We're already like at the end of the year. It's crazy. Um, but let's look at what we have on the radar. We are going to measure our, we have three measurables I want to share with you for next year. Three things that we're going to try to accomplish, and they're, it, it's going to be really easy to tell whether or not we did it, because each, each of these is very measurable. The first one is what we call 1%. Let me give you an idea of what we mean by 1%. There are 60,000 people 
that live within two miles of Arundel Christian Church. And our goal in the next year is to, through intentional invitations and random acts of kindness, bring 600, so 1% of that number, into our family of faith here at Arundel Christian Church. So to basically continue uh, to, to grow and really even outpace our growth we've experienced in the years past. We're asking God to do even more than he's done before. Here's another measurable, is what we call one degree. Now you are probably familiar with our one degree more program if you've been part of our church before, uh, before this year. But let me explain what one degree looks like. Uh, all of you have a card that you're sitting on now you see that it says one degree more. Will you hold that up and wave it at me for just a moment so I can see that you have it? All right, now, now put it on your lap, but don't look at it quite yet. I want your attention for, for just a moment. 211 degrees. That's really, really hot water. Would you agree with that? But it's just hot water. That's all you're going to have at 211 degrees. If you'd add one degree more to 211 degrees, you get 200 and... 12 degrees, great job, you've all passed the test today. Uh, you have 212 degrees, which means you're now producing steam and you can power a steam engine with just one degree more. 211 degrees, you got a, a big steam engine that's not going anywhere. 212 degrees, you can power a steam engine. And so as a church, we're saying, listen, if we want to tackle our mortgage debt and we want to get rid of it, we're going to be intentional this year about paying down $500,000 of that of that debt, of bringing that in above and beyond our normal giving. So whatever it is that you normally give, that goes towards our regular budget, all right? But additionally this year, we want to be able to write checks to our mortgage holder and say, here's an extra $500,000 right towards our principal to start paying down this mortgage rapidly. Now, in order to pull that off, what we're saying is we need everyone who calls ACC home to be one degree more generous. One degree more. You've already been generous. It hurts my heart to ask you to be more generous because we are a very generous church. But at the end of the day, we're a family. And this family, we have some debt. And as a family, we want to get out of this debt together. And so here's what I'm asking everyone to do. Now, when I say everyone, let me, let me clarify. If you're a first time guest with us, this is your second, third time here, you haven't even decided if this is your church yet, you're exempt, all right? You don't have to worry about this. But those of you who like know this church, you know our vision, you know what we're trying to accomplish and you're excited about it. Maybe you're still an attender that you need to be a partner, all right? Maybe you're a partner already and, and for whatever reason, uh, you're, all of us, like we, we give what the amount that God's put on our hearts at this moment. And thank you so much for your generosity. What I'm asking is for 100% participation that every single one of us in this room would say, I am going to participate in one degree more by being one degree more generous. Now, here's the beautiful part. I'm not going to tell you what that means. The Holy Spirit's going to put that on your heart. For some of you, you're going to go, and you're going to go to God in prayer, and you're going to say, I want to be one degree more generous. What does that mean for my family, where we are right now? And it might just be one dollar more per week. But if everyone's participating then everybody can, can figure out how to do one dollar more per week. I mean, everybody can do that. But my, my gut says that when we go to God and say, God, I want to be able to make a sacrificial gift. I want it to cost me something. I want to have to say no to something else so I can say yes to this. What is the Holy Spirit going to put on your heart? It might be an additional a dollar amount per week. It might be an additional percentage of your income towards the church. It might be an additional one-time gift before the end of the year. It might be uh, that some of you choose to take the giving challenge. If you're not familiar with what the giving challenge is, I love this about ACC. We have a 90-day challenge that we invite people into. And what it is, if you've never given a tithe to the church, if you are one of those who just kind of comes and you go and you're not really generous, you don't make a gift or, or don't tithe to your church, we want to encourage you to, to take the 90-day giving challenge. And what that looks like is for 90 days, you agree that you're going to give a tithe to the church. And during that 90-day period, because God promises in, in, in Malachi chapter 3, he says, listen, I promise you, if you give me a tithe, you're not going to regret it. Now, I, I totally just paraphrase that. But that's essentially what he says. You will not regret giving me a tithe. Test me. 
And so, and he tells us to test him. We, we can do is say, listen, let's all test him for 90 days. Try it. And if God doesn't do what he said he's going to do, you call up Pastor Mac and say, I want my money back. And he'll write you a check and give it all back to you. We've had hundreds of people take the 90-day challenge. And so far to this date, zero people have been upset that they did it and called back for a refund. Why? Because God always does what God says he's going to do. And so what I ask you to do is every one of you to consider, ask the Holy Spirit, every family, I'm asking for 100% participation. If you're like, man, I, I, do, I can't do nothing, you could do a dollar. But I, I bet God's going to call each of us into a challenge, a sacrificial gift of some sort that for the next year, all the way through the end of 2025, we're asking you to be one degree more generous so we can accomplish this goal together. What does that look like? Now, the last part of this is what we call one level. And remember I told you about our five catalysts. And so we want to see every single person in this church make one level increase in their engagement in the gospel. So for those of you who don't know Jesus yet, our challenge, our, our, our calling in your life is to be a church that expresses the truth of the gospel. And that that one level up for you is for you to go from where you are, which is pre-Christ, into a brand new relationship with Christ. So you give your life to Christ. You just quit hanging out on the fence and you, want, you, you recognize that, that Jesus is who he says he is. We would love to see you take that step of faith. Those of you who are already taking that step of faith, but you haven't been baptized, this is the year we're going to, let's, let's knock it off. Uh, God says that uh, you know, your first step of obedience once you've made a decision to follow Christ is to get baptized. Maybe that's your next step of engagement. Maybe you've been baptized and you're an attender here, but you need to become a part of the body of Christ and a partner with the church. And for most of us, we're already partners. And what we need to do is take that next catalyst. Maybe it is you're not in a life group yet, or you're not uh, attending any courses yet, or you're not worshiping regularly yet. We want to see that by the end of the year, every single one of us on average has moved up one level of engagement. Now, these don't seem like really hard goals. One percent of our community invited into the family of faith. We can do that. One degree more generous and coming up with $500,000, that's not a huge thing. We can do that. One level of engagement, we can do that. Now, when you add it all up and saying we want to see God do all of these things, it becomes a, a big God-sized thing. And so we're asking God to do a new thing in us. Now, in order to pull these three measurables off, I want to share with you quickly, and then we're going to wrap up a few things that we're going to do this year that I want you to know about. One is we're launching our residency program. What that simply means is that we're going to have three residents by the end of the year or interns that are on joining our staff that we're preparing and equipping and sending out to do ministry work. If you're interested in being a resident or intern, let us know. We'll tell you more about the program and get you in on that. Another thing that we're planning on doing is what we call our, our cafe remodel. Now, some of you might think, well, why would we remodel our cafe if we're just going to tear it down and then put something new? Well, the, the part that we're going to remodel is the part that's not going to get, it, it, we're going to expand off of it. And so we're going to redo the floors in the cafe. We're going to put in new lighting and new furniture in the cafe. And, and hopefully very soon, uh, the cafe will be open for you to come on a Monday through Saturday during the week to come and enjoy uh, really high quality coffee with your friends and family, and it'll be open to our community to use as a coffee shop. All right, so that's something that's going to happen. We also, you're going to notice this next year, what we call our engagement focus. Uh, every month, we're going to have one of our catalysts or our partnership uh, engagement. And we're going to in be inviting people strategically into that next level. If they're not already serving, you'll, you'll know the month that we're inviting you into service. If you're not already giving, you'll know the month that we're inviting you into generosity. And so every month we're going to have a different focus. We also are going to do this thing called 1,200 Touches, which means if we're going to start shifting the culture to be known for generosity in our community, one of the things that we have to practically do is we need to start now. And so for every month, we're hoping to have 1,000 touches, which means 1,000 people in our community have been randomly uh, loved on by a random act of kindness. They've been served in some way by our church. And so we're going to accomplish 12,000 of those this year as a church, loving our community in a much higher and greater way than we ever have before. 
Another thing we're in the works of developing right now is what I call one-on-one discipleship materials. Uh, We've had a lot of you ask for one-on-one discipleship, where you want someone in the church to disciple you on a one-on-one basis. We're creating materials so that anybody who wants to disciple someone else but doesn't know how to do it, you'll have the materials that walk you through a one-year discipleship program with another person. And those of you who want to be discipled, just know that we're equipping others to be able to walk with you through that process. And the last thing in here is a prison ministry that we're launching in 2025. We want to love on uh, uh, men and women in our prison system right in North Anna Arona County. And so that's already in the works. If you have interest in being a part of that, reach out to Pastor John, who's leading the charge in that. We're going to be uh, reaching out and doing ministry within the prisons of our community. So now here we are. I've, I've shared with you, that I think, the things you really ought to know. There's more details to all of this. But we're at that question of what now, God? Like, what do we do with this information? And I want to invite you into three different things before we close with a song. Uh, The first thing is probably the most fun thing. I want to invite you to come back here today after the third service and party with us in the parking lot. We want to be excited about all that God's done, and we want to be excited about all that he's going to do. And so all the food trucks will be outside. Bring a chair, set it up. We have moon bounces for the kids, music playing. We're going to party after the third service, and I want you to be a part of it. So make sure you're at party in the parking lot today, all right? Another thing that's that's, uh, a lot more difficult than partying in the parking lot is I'm asking everybody to complete a one degree more pledge. Now, it might not be today. You might need to go home and talk to your family about this. Let me just say this real quick. If you're a married couple... Like, I want you to talk about this and agree to it. If one of you wants to give less than the other, go with the smaller number. It's not my intention to mess up a marriage in this process. If you are being called to give and the amount you write down is going to make you bitter, then don't give that amount. It's also not my intention to cause anyone to give without joy in their heart. But I want you to to pray and ask God what it is that you can give with a joyful spirit that's going to encourage and uh, and strengthen your marriage. And and I want you to write that down and make sure you get that to us. And by the way, if you don't get it to us and you're one of our partners, we're going to reach out and be like, hey, we're, 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 we're still waiting on your pledge. Everybody can do something. The third thing I want us all to do with this vision is to keep Jesus at the center of it. Not, not turn this into any personality-centered thing. Not make this about any one person or one ministry or one anything. We want Jesus to be the center of it all. So if you do me a favor and stand up right where you are, we're going to sing Jesus at the center. So let's, let's pray uh, this prayer of, of music to God. Wow. We are so thankful for the truth that was shared in the message today. Please know that we as a church are praying that what you have learned today and the truths that God has put deep into your heart will manifest and grow into something amazing. You can experience that with other believers at ACC on Sunday mornings at 710 Aqua Heart Road. And remember, you belong at ACC.